Hey. Oh. That was quick. <laughs> that was probably like the smoothest technical start of any of the shows I've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So um, let's see. We'll just give uh, everyone just a few seconds to join. I do see some people uh, trickling in. That's always a, a great thing to see. And um, then we can get started. How's, how's your day been up until now, Austin? Uh, pretty good. I've been working on, you know, like module designs all morning, honestly, to try to get into the mindset. That's great. Oh, perfect. Um, we will need to uh, dive a bit deeper into that, uh, of course. Um, so what I'll do, if you're ready, let's uh, get this show on the road, okay? Yeah. Superb. So then I would say, uh, everyone, welcome to the Modular Clubhouse. And in today's show, we are joined by a very special guest um, who has just, well, actually embarked on, uh, on, on, on his maker's journey, so to say. And we are joined by the one, the only, the man, the myth, the legend, Austin from Pluton Modular. Austin, it's great to have you. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you for this opportunity. Absolutely. Well, it's, it's my pleasure. Absolutely. Um, so um, we just uh, got started and we uh, we were chatting a bit about how, you, how your day's been. And you immediately uh, dropped this bomb that you've been working on, on new uh, designs already. Um, is that uh, under embargo or do you have anything that you could already, well, maybe, maybe tease us with a bit and what you've been working on? Well, I work on designs every day. It's just they're not usually things that end up happening. Mm -hmm. uh, but I've been just kind of playing around with the concept for a, a pretty simple eight-step sequencer. Not too special, but a little better than a baseline one. Oh, superb. I think that that's something that a lot of people will have a, like a great use for. There are a couple of these really playable sequences that you do see popping up uh, more and more because people are, are starting to well reinvent them and how they can apply in, in their patches so i'm really looking forward to that as well great um so for those of you who uh, who don't know pluton um who don't and who don't know uh, austin of course um austin how would you introduce pluton modular to anyone who uh, who hasn't well visited your site or hasn't heard about you before hmm well i guess i'm an enthusiast turned creator i guess mm -hmm. uh i watched a lot of modular content and then i started getting into it and i was like well dang this sure does crossroad right with my like electronics engineering interest yeah and so i just started fiddling and then i realized hey i could probably sell this <laughs> and i decided that i would try to make a living off of this pretty seriously and so I guess how I would describe Pluton is me doing my best and trying to make things that people will enjoy. Perfect, perfect. Love that. And so how did you actually get to that point, of course? So if you were to look at um, your your introduction into modular, how long have you been, been doing that? When did you actually... Well, was, set upon that journey mm. well i watched a lot of youtube videos <laughs> as we all do of course uh probably started about six years ago i first heard of your iraq which isn't that long ago honestly mm -hmm. um i watched people like uh andrew Huang and red means recording and i was like whoa that's really cool yeah uh and I, was, and I looked into it, and it was expensive. And I was like, whoa, that can't happen. Um, but then I have a partner now. And with our combined income and our combined interest, we were able to get started with Eurorack. And we got a few modules, and we... Eurorack. It's really great. It's superb, superb. And uh, so when, when did you actually... When, when did the two of you actually, uh, well... Uh, take the plunge and, and really start to to acquire and started to well, make some your your first well kind of bit of bits of noise you might Our say bleep bloops yeah uh honestly not that long ago probably no more than a year ago great wow that's great and then immediately 
well t going full uh, full in and uh, starting to design your own uh, your own one but where where did that initial interest because it's not something that uh, I, I still hope that people just um, uh, drop into a YouTube channel on Eurorack and say hey well that's nice but what triggered that initial interest in you where you uh, where you said okay well I'm gonna watch a lot of these the, the this, this bit of content by 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 Andrew or by uh, by Jeremy where did that come from is that something that that you evolved into or where you grew into hmm. I guess if I have anyone to thank it's the YouTube algorithm <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've always been interested in like electronics and music and so when that popped up I was like huh because <laughs> it's kind of both and it's, I love that about it I can imagine I can imagine especially if you say well if, if you are into music and you have a an electric technical background then well uh, then one and one is always greater than its parts and it's probably going to be three and then yeah the, the YouTube algorithm uh, chose wisely you might say and that, they really did yeah, yeah perfect perfect and from 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 a musical perspective how where, where, where did you come from what was the kind of music you were listening to growing up what kind of music was played at home uh when you mm. were younger how, how did that all came to be mm. okay so of course i don't have that much experience with music mm -hmm. but because you know i'm only i'm only 23 but uh the music that i have had experience with i tend to enjoy kind of like more upbeat music mm -hmm. but i also like i don't know i don't really think i have a taste in music uh growing up i only heard pop songs to be honest <laughs> like whatever was on the radio i never yeah. when, when i was growing up went out of my way to listen to music but now i kind of just kind of listen to whatever still mm -hmm. but i don't know i think the direction that i prefer is more like making fun soundscapes than aiming at musical musicality mm -hmm. so it's more like where you say well uh, because I, I i i honestly don't think that there is such a thing as don't having any musical musical taste i think that that just means you've got a broad interest in music um yeah. where you where you might want to uh, change your palette from 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 time to time and i think that that's always a, a very healthy approach to music and do you then think that because of that that broad interest that that has then drawn you towards design when, when you're making music yourself nowadays where you say well i want to create these musical soundscapes um just make make sure that we are on that level with with sound design and making sure that something the, the bleep loops you might say uh sound exactly like you want is, is that because of that broad interest or is that something where you say well this is this is purely something intrinsical uh that that is you or how, how do you look at that yourself mm -hmm. uh wow that's a tough question yeah I um <laughs> hmm. it's almost philosophical you might say yeah <laughs> i'm not really sure if i can answer that even otherwise uh, we'll just mark actually... that and just think about it no worries no worries uh because it's, right. it's, it's i always try to um understand a bit more about what how people are approaching that and typically what i've um what i've come to well not just expect but maybe uh, one of my hypotheses you might say is that a lot of the the music that people enjoyed or the the music that they grew up on will of course influence their their approach to uh, maybe modular uh, or maybe music creation or sound design however you want to call it in general is that that will typically reflect a lot in their uh, in their approaches so i've i think that approximately maybe 30 to 40 percent of the people i've i've had on the show um expressed a um an interest in for instance punk rock or or, uh, or metal music um mm. at, at a certain stage in their life uh, or maybe they still have that uh, myself included and you then typically do see some of that being reflected in how they approach modular or eurorack or sound design in general and what i've also come to well 
hypothesize is that uh, people with a very open mind towards music do tend to get into the the actual beauty of sound design and that typically is then presented in a, in a very aesthetic approach to to modular uh, which would then typically be things like 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 ambient soundscapes or or pure sound design approaches so that's that that's that's the hypothesis I'm trying to test here <laughs> But I digress. Mm. <laughs> I'm in no, uh, I'm not no social psychologist or anything. I'm, I'm, I'm just a, <laughs> I'm just a YouTuber, you might say. Um, but coming from 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 that approach, you also mentioned that you you've got a, at least an electronic technical, well background or at least an interest. Uh, how did that? Yeah, come more of an be? interest, I'd say. Hmm? Yeah, more of an interest for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, because you know I'm not like classically trained in it but okay um honestly this might sound a little conceited but like <laughs> i kind yeah. of always been interested in it like even yeah. when i was a little kid i was one of those kids that like tore all their toys up and got in trouble because <laughs> i wanted to see how they work <laughs> and you know everyone has this story you know yeah, no, but and still, so that yeah, just kind great. of evolved into like digital electronics by the time i was in high school and now I'm learning about analog electronics for modular stuff, and it's honestly a blast. That's great. So what, what, what are the kind of things that you did uh, in high school or maybe even after that? Uh, what kind of projects were you working on? Uh, my high school actually had an engineering program where there was this one teacher who was kind of at the end of the school and kind of like not paid too much attention to by the school itself. Um, cause they didn't care about the program because we're in the middle of Alabama and that's just not the interest here at sports, but, <laughs> um, sorry. Uh, yeah, no worries. No worries. That teacher was in charge of all the like, uh, engineering classes. So there was like, ad design, electronics, a few, uh, there are other classes like that. And I would just skip classes and go hang out in her classroom <laughs> and play with all the because they had, like, sleeves of ICs in the back room and, like, soldering equipment and stuff. And I would just hang out in there all day. And my, the, the other teachers hated me for it, but I did not care. Mm -hmm. And you just uh, went and, there. That, that yeah, being I just your, played around all day. Yeah. That being your 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 art room, your the, the place where you could create, of course. I would definitely call it my safe place because I did not have a great school life. Nah, sorry to hear that, but then I'm happy that you had at least that that yeah. place where you could indeed, on the one hand, develop your interests and have something where you can say, well, that's actually some the some place where I actually felt safe, and that's something that I think everyone should have, of course. Um, but how did that then evolve? When what, what did you uh, end up doing after after high school? Did you pursue a uh, a future in in electronics, or how did you then came to be? Mm. where you are currently. okay yes actually i tried mm -hmm. uh i went to our local community college of course i'm in the united states so college is expensive to say the least mm -hmm. even community college so i could only afford one associate's degree which is a two-year program yeah because god bless her heart my nana who's passed had started a fund for me when I was a child so I could go to college at all. I'm really thankful for that. I can imagine, yeah. Um, so I started, like, I'm going to get an engineering degree because that's what I was interested in. Mm -hmm. And so I took one semester of that. And it 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 was wrong. It You know, it was like, this is engineering degree for get job at factory and install yeah. a capacitor. I was like, this is not, I wanted like electronic engineering. Mm -hmm. Like, and so I switched majors, of course, to graphic design. Okay. Well, that, that's something that, that, that is related to that, of course, because that is something that you need to be, because if you were into, if you're into IC design, then graphical design yes. is a very applicable skill to have. And I, also very useful yeah. for panels. 
I absolutely, of course, yeah, <laughs> spot on, absolutely. <laughs> but yeah, I honestly, I'm kind of glad I switched it though, because if I didn't meet the people I met through the art program, I would not have been happy today. And that's of course, well, because, that, yeah, that that's that's yeah. probably even more important than anything else, of course, yeah. And how did that then? Do you then think that combining those, let, let's say, three interests that you then have, of course, um, first mm -hmm. off, starting off, um, you were in a, a very healthy and, and, and safe environment in, in the graphical design uh, environment. Uh, mm -hmm. You're happy then, and then you start to go back to those three pillars that you then had, and that's, of course, the... the the musical interests and the musical well, hunger you might say combined with that in well that intrinsic draw towards electronic design or mm -hmm. electronic engineering you might even say combined with graphical design if you now say oh hey well i have someone who wants these three things i only have one piece mm -hmm. of advice for them and that's going into your rack so I think that, right. uh, I think that the the, the, the YouTube algorithm uh, sorted you nicely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ten the first time I thought, yeah. I was like, "Wow, this is fucking perfect." Yeah, absolutely. You don't need to have a sorting hat for that. No, absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> that's the first time I made a Harry Potter uh, reference, by the way, in this show. <laughs> um, I should do that more often. But that, that, that I, I love to hear those kind of stories, those kind of well, Genesis stories on how you actually got started with that. And um, if we then fast forward to, to where we are today. So I've been, um, well, we've been talking, of course, about the, uh, uh, the Envade. Uh, probably I'm, I'm not even mm -hmm. sure if that's the right way to pronounce it. How would you pronounce no, it? No, yeah, that's it. I pronounce it at least. Just Envade, yeah. The, the arcade yeah. plus envelope. Um, yeah, it's envelope and arcade, portmanteau. Absolutely. So I'm just going to paste that into the <laughs> companion channel. It's actually, uh, and actually not up for sale right now. No, but still, uh, it is a it's a it's, it's a testament to um, to what you what the design language is that you that you apply, uh, but also a bit of the the approach that you've taken towards well uh, modular design as well so I've just pasted it there um, All right. could you tell us a bit more about how that came to be how um, how did you on the one hand decide well this is this is going to be my first module how is that journey for you okay so I gathered advice from the wonderful pe wonderful people on the uh, the Wiggle Room server, which is a server that's an offshoot kind of Discord server of ModWiggler, hmm. which I found when I Googled Discord servers. Yeah. Uh, they're all wonderful there, and they kind of took me that last step from looking at Eurorag modules and getting them and being like, whoa, this is really cool, to making them, because they're so knowledgeable and kind. But um, yeah. to answer your question, I was just looking at the market, really. Looking at, uh, man, what's that website called? Where you can, like, assemble your rack online? Oh, Modular Grid, you mean? Yes, sorry, Modular Grid. I was looking at all the modules on Modular Grid and looking on Etsy and Reverb, and I was like, what's missing? <laughs> and I saw these arcade button modules, and I was like, well, these are pretty cool, but they sure are mostly just buttons connected to the power rail. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, what if I just put a little slew circuit on it? That sounds like something that would be easy enough for my first analog design and usable. And so I did. And then I made it 9 HP. <laughs> <laughs> and so that is why it is no longer on sale right now. Because I have redesigned 8 HP panels now that I have more knowledge. And they are on their way here right now from JLCPCB. Oh, great! But did you actually have to redesign the, um, the the panel itself, or was it just a a, a one HP uh, 
die shrink, you might say, of the of the existing front panel. Yeah, thankfully the um the PCB I designed for the electronics was mm -hmm. already just narrow enough. So I could just shrink the front panel down by one HP and everything else still fits. Oh, excellent. That's mm -hmm. great. That's great. And I think really great. Or yeah, 50. <laughs> Well, one of the things I, I really liked about it is, um, on the one hand, it 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 just breeds performance, it just breeds applicability. Um, but what I really liked is the immediate feedback you got from the LED in that arcade button. Was there something right. that was already in that button, or is that something that you ha had to design yourself? I was looking for buttons to use, and then there were LED buttons. And I was immediately like, oh, okay, well, we have to use this. Because <laughs> it was just so cool. Well, yes, it was. It, it's absolutely, <laughs> it looks freaking awesome, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But it also has that immediacy of visual feedback yes. on, okay, well, how how is this envelope then? How did I design this? Did I design this to be extremely snappy? Is this going to be a... Um, a really slow approach but you get that not just by listening but also by by, by, by watching mm -hmm. it and i i'm probably one of the um <laughs> the minority within eurorack that uh, responds better to uh to, to visual feedback than to uh to auditory feedback and that's why I, I immediately saw, okay, well, this is something that you can indeed use because you don't need to use your, your scope to see what you're doing. Uh, you can immediately mm -hmm. do that. You don't need to combine multiple uh, modules where you do have to grab, okay, well, I've, I've got a gate from this button and I then need to route it through a, an envelope uh, or an ADSR mm -hmm. uh, module. No, you've got it all in one and you do get that feedback. And I think that that's absolutely great. And, and especially as you said, well, you were looking into what's the problem to solve here and is that 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 more consultative approach that you've taken there is that something that you do see well uh, yourself taking on further or do you have uh, very specific modules in mind that you want to design even though it, it might not be what the where, where the gap is currently so how, how do you go about thinking about what kind of modules you want to design I think currently it's a little bit of both, because, mm -hmm. I mean, our rack, we haven't started that long ago, so honestly, our rack's still missing a lot of things, so I'm like, okay, we need a thing. Oh, the <laughs> the one that looks like the one we want is like $700, cool, I'm just gonna design one myself, <laughs> and I want to give it at least one special feature that makes it more usable than an alternative, so then... I feel like I'm doing my part to contribute to the modular world getting better and not just making another basic eight-step sequencer, for example, yeah. that just uses that one IC through a potentiometer. But you want to make it something something special, something that will immediately yes. tell people, this is a Pluton module. Yes, I want it to be more usable because it has a feature that makes it be able to do more musically or effectively you know like just a little extra to put your enthusiasm into it yeah i uh i think i i think i i think i get what you mean where you say okay well it's not gonna be you're not gonna go all out and and redesign the world but you do want to make sure that you approach it again from that consultative approach that you well um that you've or oh, apparently applied to how you were, how you designed the and en the invade um, by taking that that look at what what's missing what what problem can be right, solved yes. and if you then apply that to any other modular design where you say okay well I'm going to create well that that eight let, let's use that eight step sequencer as a uh, as an example uh, because as you say well there are a plethora of um, eight step sequences out there but mm -hmm. what is actually the the problem that people want to solve by using one of these? And if you then make sure that, that, that the functionality and the features that you, that you offer the actual users is going to make life easier for them or solve one of their problems, then, of course, yeah, then, then that's going to set mm -hmm. you apart. 
So uh, not to um, to put you on the spot here, but uh, what have you already? Do you already have those ideas about, for instance, the eight-step sequencer? Yes, the problem I have with eight-step sequencers is they're either completely massive or they're like this little digital thing with one encoder, and there's no in-between, and that makes me so upset. <laughs> I like, that. what if I want a medium-sized eight-step sequencer that has a lot of features but isn't just like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So when you're thinking about something like a, a 6 or an 8 HP uh, size, or what kind of size are you thinking about? The current size that I'm thinking about is like 10, 12 HP, which is pretty big, but, yeah, but still for you have to think about all the components are breaking up or broken out onto the board. You get eight potentiometers, eight step enables. You get you can interact interact with it with your brain and your eyes and your hands, mm -hmm. and it's not a menu at all. No, it's everything's it's, right there on the panel. And it's visible. Of course, this is you just immediately see where you at. You, you, you have that. Yes. And the beauty of that is, of course, it's it, it, it's got an analog memory. If you turn off your um, your rack and you turn it on the next day, it's still going to be there. Mm. Oh, yeah, because it's on the potentiometers. Yeah, yeah. Which is also part of the, well, what, what certain people um, come to understand as being true modular, where you say, okay, well, the, the rack remembers, um, which is, of course, not true for all digital modules, of course. Mm. Of course, I'm not opposed to digital modules. No, absolutely, because, well, I think even in even in my rack, I think that it's going to be a 50-50 split even. And um, I think that even within the digital modules that I have, um, it's predominantly uh, modules that will remember where <laughs> what the settings mm -hmm. were uh, but I do have certain modules um, that will need to be reprogrammed ev each and every time um, one of my favorite um, combinations of modules and I've, I've, I've done an interview with um, with the with the actual maker as well was the combination of the the Fraser and the two OPFM by super synthesis mm. uh, and the reason why i love that is because it's an extreme it, it just it invites you to play with it uh, but anytime you do create something extremely special once you turn your uh, your rig off and on again you're gonna have uh, you, you're gonna have to redesign it or at least well uh, you'll have to reprogram it again and that is of course well it does add to the the happy little accident that only happens once mm -hmm. a blue moon. Uh, but on the other hand, sometimes you do want to get something that you can write down, save, store, right. and recall later on. But that's just one example. And, and don't get me wrong, I still love <laughs> that combination. Of course. It's, it's, it's still, whenever I'm down in a rut, I just uh, I take those, uh, I've got two phrases and one, uh, and one uh, two or PFM. And those three together, I can just, I can literally spend an hour um, just making sure that I, I've got something and then I can just lose track of time until it's, well, the sun's coming up and I need to say, okay, well, geez, I, I might need to go to bed. Um, because it's, it's it's just that in, interesting. So I'm really looking forward to your uh, thoughts and your take on that eight-step sequencer. Um, that absolutely. Thank you. And, and what are some of, of the other uh, ideas that you've been playing with? And I, uh, I will have to ask all of the listeners right now to not take Austin's ideas and run with them. Um, these are all <laughs> shared under the um, the well, you might say the um, the NDA that um, <laughs> that we all uh, uh, well shook hands on the moment you start to listen to this show. <laughs> Oh yeah, that one. Um, <laughs> I actually do have some beans to spill. Ooh, wow. Of course, I've already spilled them on my Instagram, but like, I'd like to talk about it anyways. Mm -hmm. um, I have another module coming out like really soon. Like this prototype might be the last run of it because it's it's feeling pretty close. It's 
probably the fourth iteration of the prototype. Did I miss uh, it on Instagram then? Ooh. It's uh it's my mixer. It's oh yeah. It's called Hot Cross. Um so of course it's just a mixer when it boils down to it. It's ten HP and it's got six inputs, but they're arranged in two mixer banks kind of. Mm-hmm. So you have two three channel mixers that are like they're nice, they're like uh buffered with an off amp. Mm-hmm. So they're not like gonna lose a bunch of signal. And then the cool feature that took the longest to get right is there's a summed output with the sum weight. So you can there's a third output in addition to the output of the first and second mixer. Yeah. That's crossfaded between the outputs with C V control over the crossfade. So it's got like it needed like two VCAs for that and it was a lot of calibrating. Oh wow. I had to learn an awful lot to get this to work and I'm very proud of it. That but there's a lot of cool things you can do with it. Absolutely, because initially and I, I and now I've I've got the um, your Instagram post on the screen, so I'll include that in the in the recording as well. Um, initially, I, I, I took it at like, okay, well, this is a great stereo mixer where, where you can just make sure that you have everything under full control because of the the nicely designed layouts and the the hands on control. Uh, but now, Thank when you. you say you've got the the summed output, and now I understand how you've approached that. Mm. That is then, of course, something that does open a lot of doors for people who are designing uh, quadraphonic sounds, even because if you then say, mm. "Well, I've got, I've got um, A and B being left and right front," and you might well, say, "I want to use uh, the the summed output as a uh, either a bass or anything else," I will say the it's the, the inputs are mono. So it's two mono mixers, not two stereo mixers. No, sorry, absolutely, you're right, you're right. So <laughs> two mono mixers, and then you might you might use those to do um, uh, to do stereo, and then you can use your summed outputs yeah. to do uh, something beautifully uh, in the uh, in in the uh, in the back speakers or anything like that, where you can actually have some sort of movement uh, between that. Because if you if you think about mm -hmm. maybe channel A being left front, uh, channel B being well, uh, yeah, I didn't even think about that. But yeah. You could do that with it. Yeah, and even but if the you uh, they're all yeah. DC offset, so it's really good for control voltages. And then you can go between the two control voltages. Was the intention with it? But of course, it works at audio rate just well. Yeah. And if you do it with DC, if you just do it with control voltage, then you can well then then the sky's the sky's the limit, of course. <laughs> it's very versatile, but hard to explain. <laughs> That's going to be a very interesting one to see. Perfect. So the moment you've got some some video demos, uh, make sure that we uh, that you share those because I'm really looking forward to that. I do have, I like a recorded video of it to start a YouTube channel, but oh, I haven't gotten around to editing it yet. Oh, well, um, the, the less you edit, the better your videos are. Of course. <laughs> and of course, yeah, I, I, and I, I, well, and of course you can then also, when you combine the Envade with the Hot Cross, then it does become very interesting because then you can get mm, your, yeah, you your can. Envade actually modulating between A and B. Oh. Sorry, sorry, my, my, my mind's just racing right now. I, uh, yeah, there's a lot of possibilities I'm real <laughs> proud of. Oh, perfect. And then, of course, you've um, you also uh, teased a lot of these 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 blanks that you've uh, that you've designed recently as well. So, what's the story yeah. with those as well? well because I, I I've seen the hamburger and some of the others, uh, and I'm assuming there's a story there. You want me to be honest, or do you want me to say something that sounds cool? Um. Well, now I'm intrigued. Now I want to know both, actually. 
<laughs> All right, I'll give something that sounds cool first. Well, yeah, I just thought everyone would appreciate them. Here's the real answer. Yeah. <laughs> My Etsy store was empty and I felt bad. Oh, perfect. That, I love that. I love that. That is absolutely phenomenal. But Of course, it doesn't mean I did a subpar job. I made sure I got them right. Oh, perfect. I love That's that. That's fine. And, well, and, and I, I've seen a lot of people online really just, um, well, they, they went berserk about these. Uh, so how's that response been? Uh... <laughs> Um, the response has been great, but I've only sold one. <laughs> that is absolutely bonkers. How could that be? I don't I, know. Let me just see because I I can't seem to find the full set on Instagram. Is that on Twitter then, or where could I find them? Did I forget to make the post? I'm not Hold sure. on. I might have forgot to make the Instagram post. I had it all ready to go. <laughs> Oh wow! Okay, well, I sure did. You f you heard it here first, folks. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> I love that it. That explains it, I guess. But still, uh, but, but where did I actually end up seeing those those uh, the people responding to them? Where is it? Um, jeez, it may have been in the server. Oh, that's because I remember be. I posted them. Yeah, in buy sell trade. Hmm. Let's see. Buy sell trade. Oh, is that it? Oh yeah, there you go. Yeah. So you've got the hamburger with the. I think it's supposed to be a dead fish. It's a little sardine. Their food theme. So we got a hamburger. We got a sardine, and we got some peppers, and then a straw, because I couldn't think of anything else to put on the smallest ones. Mm -hmm. And then the last one just has cool dots on it. Sprinkles. And of course, they all have a professional side, so they're not just silly. No, but I, I, I do seem to. I do love them. And then, and, then, and, the, and then the food theme. So even though you said, well, okay, well... Um, you needed to have some blanks, and this was your being you being creative. Uh, but where did the food theme come from? Honestly, nowhere in particular. I was just like, you know what would be cute? Little food panels. <laughs> no, but still, that, that's exactly what people need. I've I've seen I've seen quite morbid. Um, the, who was that? Uh, There's not enough cute things in your Iraq. Well, yes and no. Yes and no. I, uh, yes, there are... I know they exist, they, but they there's not that many. Oh, what was it? The, there was this module. Um, I ran into it once, and this was like the brightest, um, most over-the-top module ever. But now I forgot what, what, which one it was and it was it was yellow it was pink it was all over the uh, over the color gamut you might say and uh, but i think it was out of production um but one of the things that i've been i've been talking about on the on the channel as well is to bring a bit more color into eurorack and i think that uh companies like uh like dreadbooks for instance um who mm, have, yes i love their aesthetic yeah that plus they make things very affordable so i think like mm -hmm. their uh, their cheapest module is uh something like 50 euros uh probably the same uh, amount in in american rubles um and um and all the way up to 100 maybe something like that mm -hmm. so on the one hand they have brought a lot of color into well into racks in general uh, but also make make sure to uh, make it very affordable, and yeah, um, I'm going to be working on on some other dreadbooks uh, modules going forward. But still, I love mm. that that approach. The first um, the first module from dreadbooks, the first chromatic module I I mm. got was actually <laughs> a Father's Day present for my kids, and it was bright pink. Oh. And I'm like, well, yes, <laughs> great. This is what I needed. 
and yeah and I, I, I absolutely adore them for for doing things like that making sure that things are, are bright and and and, and, and well, uh, cute or uh, or vibrant or lively um, because yeah there is of course this this ongoing battle between uh, black panels versus silver panels uh, but I'm on team color in that regard so yeah yeah but, still, but I guess it, the fear is yeah. someone who's making modules is if I make them too colorful then the vast majority of people will be like ew I don't want that and then I won't sell any mm -hmm. well that's a, that's a great point and I think that that's that's something that we we, we could of course talk about because I I totally appreciate uh, understand and respect that um, that approach from a, from a modular maker because at the end of the day you want to create something that is very usable that is mm -hmm. exactly and what that people, people want to you yes because I, I will yeah. have no money to live on <laughs> otherwise yes indeed and I have literally read comments on the uh, in this case the um, the Dreadbox Ataxia which was indeed by mm -hmm. Pink or Magenta however you want to call it um, where people actually without any sort of sarcasm or cynicism said I would have bought this if this was black I know and, I've seen comments like that that's why it's yeah, so scary but, well it's not, yeah, well, scary it's, it's well there's no accounting for taste of course um, but yeah. what I then do appreciate and and this was of course something that we talked about with uh, with Eric from from Schlappy Engineering last week, who does offer um, his modules in in both well uh, black and mm. and silver, and one of the things that I might then see evolving is especially in the in the DIY space and and don't get me wrong I've got two left hands so I'll the moment I, I I'll, I'll touch a, a sword and iron I'll probably set my house on fire or something uh, oh but, Lord. <laughs> yeah but what maybe what you we can then uh, one of the things that I, I I uncovered on one of the modules I'm look, looking into currently and I'm actually filming uh, at the same time is reversible faceplates where you might mm. say okay well and in this case this was on the clacking keypad uh, by Ambit Studio and the North Coast uh, Modular uh, Society. Oh yeah, I've or seen collective. that one. It looks really cool. I almost bought one. I still might someday. Oh, it's a it's a great thing, um, and I, I there, there there are a couple of things that I truly love about that module, um, but um, the the Envade got it beat on 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 one on one exact point, and that what? is what does not light out? Well, not just the lights, but it is the uh, the built-in envelope. Because the one thing I do with the uh, with the click pad is I just route everything through envelopes immediately, because that's how mm. I want to use that. Um, right. I, that's why I was. Yeah. Because it's like, what do you do when you have a gate signal? You run it into an envelope. Yeah, absolutely, and that's why I'm. I'm, I'm and don't get me wrong there is there is a lot of application for the for the for the clack keypad without running it through an envelope oh, first but in my uh, in my workflow and in my um, well um, I'm, I'm well I'm probably like the worst musician ever um, but still True there is, well we might do a do a uh, do a face off on that um, <laughs> but still <laughs> I, I, I personally, one of the things I love to do is use that to, well, just automate some some nice effects here and there. Uh, but mm -hmm. I digress. The reason why I brought it up is um, because you can actually just turn it around and make sure, okay, well, I want a buttons on top, or I want to have the um, uh, the in and outputs on top. So if you just reverse the the front plate, the the, the front panel, you can actually have that um, have that as well. So you'll have to just. Mm flip the front panel and you'll have to well turn all of the keys uh, 180 degrees and you've got that that uh, that solution for you so that being said um yeah i've well, actually been looking into reversible uh face plates since someone mentioned it to me yeah uh but but i really like the concept of having 
like a little place to sign if you're doing it because my modules are all like diy kits yeah are available as diy kits you could have assembled too but i really like the concept that you can write your little name and like when you assembled it on the back of the panel in little spots mm -hmm. and so i've been doing that instead i might switch over to reversible faceplates in the future just because of the utility but i think it's very fun to be able to put your name on it as the person who assembled it Oh, that, and also informative to other people who would be buying it off of you. Yeah, and it's something that um, was it Moog or Korg that did this? Because oh, um, did they do that? Well, uh, well, just let me check. Um, I do not own anything from Moog or Korg. I don't think at all. Well, I can't afford Moog. Um, okay, so no, I have the this? Korg SD sixty four. That's Korg. Yeah, well, I've got the Korg uh, NTS-1, uh, and I thought it was the NTS-1, uh, where you can actually say, well, once you've assembled it, that you can then write your name in the QA uh, portion. Uh, yeah. But it's not the Korg NTS-1, so then I must, then I think it was the um, the, the, the Moog uh, DIY set, uh, Moog uh. DIY, which was it, the Workstat, yeah. All right. Uh, um, work stats, which I assume I should pronounce as Verkstatt, but yeah. And honestly, who knows? But the key thing is that I, I remember I've watched some of the DIY builds where they then, uh, uh, as if, uh, oh, I think it was actually DivKit that did that. So, uh, so Ben, that um, showed that you can then sign the, the actual QA sheet yourself for uh, mm. properly assembling it. Um, but I digress again. So this is what happens during these interviews. We all <laughs> just run off in tangents. And I love, love that about it. Um, so Kyle from Signal Sounds uh, has weighed in um, on the companion channel. Ritual Electronics, mm. those are indeed the ones that I was... Um, that I was thinking about. They are morbid, and on the one hand, they are morbid. Um, they they've got a, a very powerful aesthetic to them, and it is yeah, I, I like it. But I would like to have the combined approach. Uh, Rory um, points Ooh. out that um, he's got the long sleeve, and I love it. Their designs are incredible. Absolutely, they are amongst. Uh, probably the most artful panel designs and um, blank designs that are out there so that's absolutely true and then Kyle says and, and this is this is something so Kyle um, well as his name implies he works at signal sounds in the UK and so he's got a great insight into okay well what sells really well what sells uh, less and he, 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 he weighs in saying, yeah, typically panel colors other than black or silver don't do so great. The Dreadbox ones are a bit of an exception. And I, yeah, I, I have to uh, say that I understand that, or I at least um, I see how that, how, how that came to be. But then of course, if you then have a reversible faceplate where you might have one colorful side and maybe the other side being black or, or, or silver, mm. I think that, that would be a very good compromise even. Um, with That one... could be something in the future that I might be able to do, but currently yeah. uh, I have like PCB panels going on, so getting a different color on the other side wouldn't be feasible for me. No, of course not, of course not. But if, the, if that ever does happen, please make sure that people with two left hands can also just uh, swap the faceplate themselves. And you don't need to have a uh, an engineering degree to do so. <laughs> I still need to. Um, I, I'll, I'll probably just still need to make sure that I give a DIY a, a, a try. Some a DIY a DI try. A DI try. Yeah. I'll, 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 I've been, I'm so I've, sorry. I've, 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 been, I've been talking to, um, uh, to Paul Paul Tuss from Error Instruments, and then they run workshops, and I've been talking to. Uh, people like Manu from Bafaco and they run workshops and I, I, I'm i just afraid that I'll lose a lot of credibility if I go in there and just burn the house down the moment I touch a, oh, a God. silver iron. 
But yeah, we'll see. It's all right, fine. It's fine. <laughs> the last time I touched a solder iron would probably have been in high school. Uh, mm. Probably around when I was 14 or 15, something like that. And no, I didn't burn anything down, but just to talk a bit about okay, well, what, what, what happened there. Um, no, that's great. I love to, 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 to do these um, these tangents that we're running into. So um, in, in regards to your to your plans going forward, Austin, um, as you said, well, you currently, well, unfortunately, you, you don't have anything up for sale currently uh, <laughs> because you're, you're, of course, waiting for the uh, The, the, the blanks panels. are there. Did the, oh, are they? Did yeah. I, did I overlook those? <gasps> Where are they? So if I go to click on... Oh, they're not on my website either. I no, they're sure should website, have done that. If I, if, I, if I go to Etsy, how do I get to Etsy? Yeah, they're on my Etsy. And in fact, if you search for Eurorack blanks, they're like right there. So I'm kind of surprised that only one's been bought. Etsy Eurorack blanks. Um, okay. I always have a... Oh, this is actually quite a nice selection on Etsy. I didn't... Oh, no. no yeah, you should cool. always look on Etsy first if you want modules for a good price from small well, companies. Not, not necessarily um, Eurorack. If I just look for Pluton... Hmm. I really appreciate all the people who sell on Etsy. Like, a lot. Because I know that a lot of people who listen to this are people who've like been on in the past or care about the people who've been on in the past. Yeah. And so I just want to say thank you for people who sell and buy the modules on Etsy. Because they're very Absolutely. great and I appreciate them. Yeah, and, uh, and I now I'm, I'm looking for, um, I'm trying to find your, uh, your Etsy shop. But I immediately see a lot of the people that I've been uh, working with previously. I do see... For instance, the the monotropa that was a um, <laughs> the funny thing about monotropa and reverse landfill. Um, the guy actually just lives like a couple of couple of miles away from me. And, um, no way! That's yeah, crazy. well, it's 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 an odd small uh, small <laughs> small world, you might say. Um, and then, oh, I, why can't I, I find? I posted it for you in the companion channel. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. That is exactly what I needed. So there you go. Here we go. So I need to wave. Oh, over. it probably shows up so fast in the search for me because it's local. Is that it? Of course. Yeah. Yeah, this it's a local great. seller. Oh. Okay. Jeez. My 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 in-laws are making noise here. Um. So okay, so you yeah, uh, so you don't have a full set of all of them that you then. Oh, nice. Oh, that you can get all at once. I don't know. I guess I could make that an option. Yeah, that's nice. Perfect. Great. No, I'll I'll, I'll make sure to have this on the um, uh, on the recording as well. That's great. Uh, but then of course, well, uh, you're waiting on the other uh, panels for the. Uh, for, for, for the for the invade of course and then you're working mm -hmm. on the um oh what's the oh, sorry for this the hot cross it's called hot well. cross yeah um okay so yeah the panels for invade and the what's coming in for hot cross is um hmm my brain just turned off uh the one that isn't the front panel just like the main board okay yeah yeah, that's what that's what's iterating. The front panel design for it's like done. That's why I posted it. Um, Superb. And then there's also another module I didn't mention earlier that I'm working on, but it's not exciting. That's why. But it's just like an input, as an output attenuator. It can go from like one twentieth voltage to twenty times. It's got like two mono channels and then stereo jacks if you want to do that. Well, and that's that. Just those are the nice kind of utility. utilities that you need, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah, that one's straight up because our case. We have a nifty case. God bless them. It's nice. The MIDI's really cool. The output's mono. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
I've got one here as well, and it's 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 one of the um, the the standard guests in my videos because it's it's nice, it's portable, and it's uh, it's a great thing, and it is. I would probably say the most dangerous thing there is. Well, economically, you might say because it is that gateway drug into your Iraq. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing we got. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, and it's still I, I love I love the thing to pieces. Even even the, the the modules that are not unanimously loved throughout the <laughs> Iraq community. Chips is still, okay. No, but even 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 cells. Come on, it's 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 great. It, it, it does what it does. It's it, great, except when I went to update the firmware, it blue screened my partner's computer every time I oh, no. plugged it in. <laughs> I heard, it's a little. I heard about that. Problem. So I've been I've, uh, I've been talking to the to the people over at um uh, at uh, uh what, what, what I create it? audio. Create audio. And they, oh. they, they gave me some, uh, because I had some trouble updating, I'm not even sure whether it was the case or one of the modules, uh, so they, they just uh, sent me some, some, some beta firmware update tool, and they've been oh, so no extremely helpful. So uh, if you have any trouble with updating, uh, please do not hesitate to reach out to Create Audio directly. They have been a... Oh, wow. They've been, they've, they've been a dream to work with, absolutely. All right, dang! I'll definitely do that after this. Well, and that—that's of course also part to the to the comment you made earlier, um, where you said, "Okay, well, I'm on the on the, the Wiggly Discord server." Um, <laughs> the Wiggle Room. The Wiggle Room. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> We're just so uh, happy to have a similar name to me, not related. <laughs> Sorry that, um, but it is absolutely true for the well the, the the predominant amount of people within Eurorack. Everyone has been so welcoming, so supportive and for me, I I, I, I can't go into the <laughs> I, I, I didn't have the six years of YouTube history that you've had when I dove into Eurorack. But still mm. it's um the people have been so welcoming, so extremely supportive and the yes. willingness to even answer the most trivial questions it has been a blast within this community i might say this community is just so great that's honestly the like carry on top that made me like i have to i have to make things for these people they're so kind <laughs> give something back right that, that's all that's that's what mm -hmm. it's all about no that's absolutely spot on um, so of course, well, <laughs> I did. I, I always try to say, well, yeah, we're going to do a thirty-minute interview, and then we always go over. So we're almost um, at the top of the hour, and I've I I, mm. I I haven't even started with my last two questions, uh, let alone well offer it up to the to the audience. Whoops. So that's uh, well, shame on me. Um, but I do want to get those two questions out of the way, and. That is, of course, well, on the one hand, if you were to go back to the, to young Austin, who ran into the, uh, the engineering uh, classroom whenever he needed, um, mm. if you could tell him one thing or give him one piece of advice, uh, what would that have been? Well, you know, there's the whole thing about if you change the past, the future changes. But aside from that... Of course, yeah. We all know the um, Back to the Future rules. So, yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> um, I guess I'd probably just say uh, don't listen to the people who are being assholes to you because they don't know shit. And I think that that is absolutely a piece of advice everyone can take mm -hmm. and use that, right? Of course. So, Perfect. Great. I didn't invent that advice. No, absolutely. No, well, I, I, I do appreciate it. Absolutely. Spot on. Um, and then, of course, as I, I always ask uh, as a last question is, um, well, I've been, I've, been, I've been asking you so many things and you've spilled a lot of beans already. Um, but is there anything you want to ask me? Mm. Uh, how are you so cool? Okay, no, sorry. Um, 
No, I don't think so necessarily. I just want to do, I do want to say I really appreciate this show you do and that you somehow managed to locate me and ask me if I wanted to be on. No, absolutely. And, I, and as I said, I um, I scour, I, I try to make sure that I am aware of a lot of people within the Eurex sphere and that can go all the way up to the, the really best known um, uh, Eurex makers. But what I find, and, and those stories about okay how they got started um, X years ago, I love those stories. But what I also love is hearing from people who who just joined, who just dove into that. On the one hand, because that is something that I can immediately relate to, um, being a, a a late bloomer when it comes to Eurorack as well, or synthesizers in general, even. Um, but also because that is where a lot of the the out of the box thinking is happening and i um i might i might i might even want to point out for instance um a company like uh, Likaon. so that's nico out of out of um, uh, out of the alps here in here in europe and he he got started really late on as well and he created the mandala which is probably like the biggest eurorack uh, module i've ever seen and it was so refreshing and I, I i then compare that to how you've captured a lot of the the requirements that people had in the invade as well and that then triggers me to say okay well how has someone um who describes themselves as being not just uh, <laughs> uh not just young but actually young uh, because that, that that's how you position yourself as well being oh, i'm young i'm unexperienced i i have so much to learn but then you design something that really well uh ups well not just upsets but uh is quite revolutionary within Eurorack. and i want to come and understand that journey and the um and the evolution you went through i would say and yeah that, that that's 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 probably what triggered me because of course there are a lot of people out there that that make their oscillators or that might make a, a filter here or there uh, but making sure that you have something truly innovative by combining simple building blocks and making sure that you can then position something that will solve a lot of problems for people within your rack that that's great that's a gift you're gonna make me cry no oh. i don't that's not that's not that, that's that's the last thing i want to do because we want to make it nice and, and and upbeat that's what we wanted that that's the kind of music you like as well make it upbeat absolutely no great no but that that's that's a good um a good question so that's typically how i approach this uh so yeah of course i do reach out to the um the better known uh names out there in Eurorack, but i also want to make sure that for every household name if there even is such a thing within Eurorack I also want to make sure that I also focus on people who are just embarking on that journey uh, because yeah then then you reach the whole spectrum right and I just want to give everyone the um, well not the exposure because I hate that word but the <laughs> the attention or the uh, might even say the respect that anyone within the maker sphere deserves. Yeah, no, I don't want to make you cry. Don't apologies for that. <laughs> um, so with that being Tappy said, cry. <laughs> so with that being said, um, if anyone within the audience has any questions, uh, please feel free to raise your hand, and I'm going to grab you up on stage. Um, if you are unable, unwilling, or incapable of uh, asking your question live, please feel free to drop it into the companion channel and we'll uh, make sure that we answer it straight away. Um, so I do, s um, okay, Kyle says, I think another way to look at module design is rather than problem solving is to present challenges, not like bad UI challenges. Yeah. So I yeah, think you that's already, yeah, that, that you already a really cool way to look there. at it. 
because it's a give someone something to explore, I guess you mean? Yeah, I think so, yeah. That's a really great way to look at it. I never considered that, like, viewpoint. So where you say, instead of just trying to solve a problem, uh, you become the problem as a as a module where you say okay well i i i offer you all of these capabilities i'm not going to tell you how to solve them but anytime you want to do something it's going to present you with something new hmm. that's great oh my gosh i never considered that philosophy so what would be a so the first module that would come to mind is something like maths uh where you mm. might say well uh, I, personally i'll uh, I incorporate maths in as much as my, my patches as I as I can and I've done a lot of creative things there uh, but you might say that even maths could be considered a, a canvas on which you can then build where you can mm -hmm. say okay well even though it is a challenging module because I, I, I still have to meet the person that can truly look me in my eyes and say I have mastered maths uh, probably the only person that could do that is probably Tony from, from Make Noise <laughs> who designed it yeah <laughs> at least I think I mean fair it. enough yeah yeah or well, probably maybe someone from, from, from the Bukla area uh, uh, era um, no that's a great that's a great point to make Kyle I, I truly like that any other um, questions comments thoughts wisdoms yes please send wisdoms <laughs> well the biggest wisdom you already instilled in us and that is uh, make sure you're happy make sure you choose that which ensures that as well i love that and uh, don't listen to bullies yeah don't listen to bullies everybody <laughs> well absolutely perfect um, so if we don't have any other questions, um, then I will, again, uh, Austin, I, I do want to thank you uh, for joining. I, I, I want to thank you for all of the, uh, the fresh ideas you bring to URAC. I want to thank you for, uh, for your time. And um, yeah, any, any, any closing comments or thoughts? I want to hit you with that no you. Thank you for having me on the show and validating everything i'm doing <laughs> no worries no worries uh, you're more than welcome and and th th this is exactly why i um why i started to do this no you're you're absolutely welcome the this is, the owner has been mine um that being said um let's wrap this up so i would say everyone uh, whether you're listening to this show live um listen to this recording uh, on youtube or anyone who might want to take these these episodes and turn them into a podcast uh, please feel free to do so because I am releasing all of these videos under creative comments so if you have a creative outlet how you want to uh, use these uh, please feel free to do so uh, but um, as always uh, just let me know I want to <laughs> know exactly where where the stuff is ending up on uh, but that's just a request not a demand um, thanks again for listening make sure that if you have any questions for me or to uh, or, or for Austin uh, reach out uh, to me via email at jesper at the modular clubhouse.nl uh, join the discord server um, and, uh, and ask it there or just leave a comment in the YouTube uh, comments below and Austin what's the best way for people to reach out to you with uh, with requests questions or comments uh probably through the pluton discord right now which is on the website plutonmodular.com perfect and i'll make sure to uh, link to uh, your discord as well in the uh, in the comments as well so people are capable of uh, making sure to easily join that with the click of a button um thank you so that being said thanks again everyone uh for the the moment please feel free to uh to ask anything uh, have a look at the the channel have a look at the discord uh, for now I would say please everyone stay safe stay healthy and i do hope that everyone is able to join um, for the show on not on tuesday 
because I had to move that. So who's going to be our next guest? Ooh, now we're in for a treat. Let me just check the calendar. Um, because I think that this is going to be a big surprise to a lot of people. Um, there you go. So, oh yeah, there you go. On next Thursday, so that is February 3rd, uh, we'll have Marcus and Patrick from Noise Engineering on the uh, on the show. Um, so these will these people will be able to share everything uh, about their design uh, approach uh, their production approach and they'll be able to answer any questions uh, we might have so feel free to join uh, prepare some questions up front join the companion channel join us live or just listen to the recording afterwards so again everyone stay safe stay healthy talk to you then cheers bye bye